Good afternoon, everyone. It is Holy Wednesday here in 2020. We are approaching the weekend when everything truly critical to the Christian faith took place, both the good and the bad, but we needed the bad to get to the blessed. One of the things that can't be overlooked and which I want to just touch on for a few minutes today is the role of Judas Iscariot in the hours leading up to Jesus' crucifixion and death. The Gospels struggle to tell this story with any kind of objectivity, and quite frankly, they fail. The men who wrote the story can't seem to see him as anything other than the betrayer. And in trying to explore a motive, all they can come up with is greed. And yet Jesus knew what was coming. He knows who. He knows when. And this is what we read in John 13, starting at verse 18. Jesus said, I'm not referring to all of you. I know those I have chosen. But this is to fulfill that passage of Scripture, He who shared my bread has turned against me. I'm telling you now before it happens, so that when it does happen, you will believe that I am who I am. Very truly, I tell you, whoever accepts anyone I send accepts me, and whoever accepts me accepts the one who sent me. After he had said this, Jesus was troubled in spirit and testified, Very truly, I tell you, one of you is going to betray me. His disciples stared at one another at a loss to know which of them he meant. One of them, the disciple whom Jesus loved, was reclining next to him. Simon Peter motioned to his, this disciple and said, Ask him which one he means. Leaning back against Jesus, he asked him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, It is the one to whom I will give this piece of bread when I have dipped it in the dish. Then dipping the piece of bread, he gave it to Judas, son of Simon Iscariot. As soon as Judas took the bread, Satan entered into him. So Jesus told him, What you are about to do, do quickly. But no one at the meal understood why Jesus said this to him. Since Judas had charge of the money, some thought Jesus was telling him to buy what was needed for the festival or to give something to the poor. As soon as Judas had taken the bread, he went out, and it was night. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In 2004, there was a wave of Bible movies. These come every once in a while. And in 2004, uh, the season was dominated by Mel Gibson's The Passion of the Christ. In a somewhat lower tone, trying to be more complete, uh, was The Gospel of John. While on TV, during Holy Week, we were treated to a two-part miniseries on Thursday and Friday that was simply entitled Judas. Within that story, the young man from the town of Carioth is the most ardent of Jesus' followers, more so than Peter in some ways. He sees that Jesus is the Messiah, but he thinks Jesus is taking the slow way to reach the people with his message. It is Judas in this movie who urges Jesus to commission the twelve and send them out two by two to heal the sick, cast out demons, and pray and preach for the people. His motive for the betrayal is impatience. If this Judas had been on the pinnacle of the temple when Satan was tempting Jesus and saying, throw yourself off and show your, your power to the people, Judas would have come up and given the final shove. Show them, draw them in, and do it now so that everyone can see and know that you are the Messiah who will set us free from... Well, Rome or sin, they're all the same thing to this Judas. Other authors and playwrights and screenwriters have tried to explore Judas's motives over the centuries and have found different angles. Tim Rice, for Jesus Christ Superstar, in contrast to the miniseries, had a Judas who thought Jesus was moving too fast who wanted the temple authorities to slow him down and talk some sense into him. Whatever the case, it is the conclusion of everyone that Satan somehow entered into Judas, manipulated something within him, and led him to betray Jesus. 
I don't know what caused Judas to go to the chief priests on that dark night long ago. But I do know that I'm not really in a position to judge poor Judas. After all, how am I better than him? When I speak with scorn about someone I'm supposed to love or call someone a fool for what they have done, how am I better? When I fail to love those around me, when I don't forgive a wrong committed against me, when I betray a trust that has been given over to me, how am I any better than Judas Iscariot? After all, I am a sinner. We all are. And Jesus knew it. I think that's what's always got me about the Judas story. Jesus knew that Judas would betray him, just as he knew that the others would run away when he was arrested. He knew that it would be Judas. He knew when it would happen. He knew what would happen. And he knew that at the end of the day, it would see the end of his human life on earth. He also knew that death would not end sin. His death would not end sin. It would not eliminate sinfulness from the world. When he rose from the dead, people would still be sinning. As he gave his final lessons to his disciples after his resurrection, people would still be sinning. As the disciples went out into the world, they and everyone they met, everyone they converted, everyone they baptized, everyone who heard what the followers of Christ were doing and were moved to learn more, they would still be sinners. They would still be capable of betraying the message and love and grace that they had been given by God. But, through the death of Jesus, the price for sin could be taken away. Through the blood of Jesus, the stain of the sin could be washed away. Through the sacrifice of Jesus, the sinner him or herself can be delivered. Through the grace of Jesus, the sinner can learn what it is to be forgiven and to forgive. Going back to that movie for a moment, the, the final scene I thought was an interesting departure from the common treatment of Judas's death. As the sun rises on Saturday, three of the disciples ride out to where Judas's body is hanging from a tree. As they begin to cut it down, one of them growls, why are we doing this? He knows what Judas did, they all do. But one of the others replies, Jesus would have wanted it. At that, they lay out the traitor's body and they begin to pray, asking for God's mercy upon him. Judas betrayed Jesus, yes. He handed him over at a time when the crowd wouldn't rally around him and with the kiss of friendship, marked him as the one to arrest and condemn. Yes, he did this. He was filled with remorse when he saw where his actions were taking Jesus to death. And though he tried to change things back, they wouldn't go. Words couldn't be unspoken. Actions couldn't be undone. And as Jesus hung from the cross, Judas hung from a tree. These things we know. But my friends, we are Judases whenever we betray Christ with our sinful words or our sinful actions. We betray him, and yet we are forgiven. We sin, and yet we are made clean. We die, and yet we will be raised to eternal life if we have faith, hope, and trust in Christ who hung on the cross for our sake. Thanks be to God, our help and our deliverer. Amen. Let's pray. Eternal Father, you sent your Son, Jesus, to live among us, to be one of us, to teach us and to guide us and help us see you in the faces and the places that surround us. But the lessons weren't enough. We needed the cross as well. Our sins have hooked us too deeply. We can never escape them without you. 
We can never be clean of their stain without the power of your blood shed for us. We can never be strong enough to live for you instead of ourselves without the strength of your spirit sent for us. As we consider again the cross that Jesus hung on, as we consider our own dark nights when the sting of our sins is deep and fresh, help us to see the promises that are there. The promise of deliverance, the promise of redemption, the promise of forgiveness. Plant these promises in our hearts and bring them to fruition within us. We pray through Christ our Lord and Savior. Amen. So tomorrow is Maundy Thursday, and I am hoping to have this uh, Thursday's meditation up and ready to load by about 6 o'clock, by about dinner, uh, so that you can see uh, the Maundy Thursday meal that we have, and we'll do a meditation on uh, what that meant to Jesus and his disciples in their time, and then how it was changed for us. And then, of course, there will be Friday, and again, Friday is 10 a.m. God bless and be with you on this lovely day. Bye now.